I condemned the people who booed President Edgar Chagwalungu at the inauguration of President Hagainde Hijidema. But I didn't hear anyone from the UPND condemning them. Today, I want to say, I feel pity for Hagain de Hijidema. That less than 24 months since being sworn in and people celebrating at, Indip at Hero Stadium, less than 24 months later, people have the courage to stand straight, stand with their face straight to him, not hiding and booing him. I feel pity for him. The people who gathered at Heroes Stadium obviously were from one party. And that's the reason why they booed ECL. But what about the ones who booed a sitting president less than 24 months after being sworn in? What does that say? It tells that the Zambian people have now started to realize that what we said prior to the elections of 2021 has come to manifest itself. The devil you know is better than the angel you don't. And not everything that glitters is gold. The Zambians have started to realize that the angel is actually the devil. What posture does the angel has now started to show its true colors as the devil? Those of you who are as old as I am will remember that our founding father, Kenneth David Kaunda, sat on that seat of presidency for 26 years before anyone booed him. 26 years. It was only in the 1990 and 1991 when people had the courage to boo Kenneth Kaunda. Ever since then, the five successive presidents ended their tenure without being booed. My friend has ended booing in two years. I shudder to imagine what will happen after four years. My appeal to President Hagainde is watch the space. At these meetings of his, what was he saying? When he went to Lusaka Correctional Facility, all of us believed he was going there to console those people. We believed that he was going to console our brothers and sisters who happened to find themselves on the other side of the law. Instead, what did President Hagainde do? He seized that moment to issue threats. Threats against what he refers to as the thugs, PF thugs. <coughs> A democratically elected president chooses to use a platform such as the one that he was offered at Lusaka Correctional Services to say these PF thugs have started regrouping. He even goes further to say they are walking free because of my kindness, otherwise they'd have all been arrested. Sure. President Hagainde, the freedom of association that Zambians enjoy is not at your behest. 
It is not because of you. The constitution of Zambia was first written when you and me were still in diapers or nappies. You and me did not take part in writing that constitution. Our forefathers decided that every Zambian shall have a freedom of association. And they did not say that the person who is elected president is the one who is going to give this freedom to the people. No. That is our constitutional right. And the threats of that nature shall not intimidate us. It shall not intimidate us and get it from me. We will not be stopped by you from regrouping. If you are going to a football match and you know the stadium you are going, the stadium you are going to use, both teams are allowed to go and test the ground. If the home team decides, no, we will not allow the visiting team to test the ground, what does that mean? Scared little men. For you to intimidate us and tell us not to regroup, it simply shows us, Hagainde, that even your victory, you yourself know your victory was a fluke. You are so scared, Steve, to allow us to even meet. Because if we do, you know that the people who will listen to us, they will not boo us. Zambians must be assured that the Patriotic Front shall continue to regroup. Yeah. Yes. As a matter of fact, ordinary members of the party, ordinary citizens, have been beseeching us as to why we are not reorganizing. They have been telling us, what are you waiting for? We here, as a matter of fact, have delayed what the Zambian people want us to do. Yes. And Haga Inde Mwenzuma, we are going to regroup. Yeah. Noyanda, Notayandi, we shall regroup. Yeah. We'll even regroup in Wengwa. Agubu Wengwa, Koonse Turasiga Mudala, we are coming to regroup in Wengwa. Tatuingwa Mbea Agope. We already gave instructions to our Copper Belt Committee, our Central Province Committee, and our Lusaka Committee. Between now and 28th of October, we're going to show that we can regroup. Yes. With or without money, we shall regroup. Yes. Our confidence is in the people. And the people are the ones who want to meet us. Haga yeah, Inde, the Democrat, and he wants to posture us as a Democrat. He even has the audacity to stand as a president and say, Tizachinja Mingalato. Akavinira uku, naise tavinira uku. Tika siriza, tapinda muka kumbuyo, tagwira pakosi. <laughs> Mutu ya kama yomu muka ngoto, kimuloi. Yes. Muntu ujata mwe njina ansingo. Mujai. 
even in wrestling, there are rules that apply when you hold another person's throat. Because if you want to kill a person quickly, you strangle them. And you don't strangle them by holding the hand. You strangle them by the neck. For a Republican president to stand in front of a crowd, which includes young, innocent children, and to say to them, Nizamu Gwira Pakosi, Where to, dear Zambia? Where to, my mother country? If the president is the one who's going to be introducing murderous tactics to people and encouraging murderous attack, if you hold somebody on the throat from the back, how do they defend themselves? I said scared little men Scared little man, but now it is scared little murderer. Yeah. Yes. A boxer has rules. You don't punch a person when you are, they're giving you their back. Face them in front. Hitting somebody in boxing while they are facing, they are, you are facing their back is called a bad tactic. And it's a sign of cowardice. Hagainde wants to murder us using dirty tactics. I thought that the name BMW was enough. But it seems like it is not. He is actually murderous BMW. <laughs> I don't think any right thinking person in the world would tolerate any leader of any kind to issue such a threat. It is totally unheard of. It is totally unheard of. For goodness sake, that Pamupando, you are not the first. You are the seventh. And if you think you shall be the last, Wabeja. Wabeja. That is not your seat. We told you in 2021. Naimu Mazambians, you don't listen. We told you, we said, we know this man. The way he rose in UPND and came and took over and said, Amuamu Yaya, is what he is also thinking he can do to Zambia. Azabu Edapo, Azabu Edapo, Azakalapati. I'll come back to the issue of Mingalato. But before I talk about that, let me just remind my friend Hagainde. He has told us now, give me time. Give me time. Give you PND time. Muzamba manje, 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 muzamba kudia, mande. Sima, Tuesday rice, Wednesday potato, balanced diet, balanced diet, not balanced diet, Sazio. <laughs> you afford electricity, you afford fuel, Bwanji Bwanji. I want to remind. President Hagainde, that in leadership, 
there is also morality. Just like in ordinary life, there is morality. President Haga, in the, in the run-up to the elections in 2021, he told you, Zambians, vote for me. Declare me at 12 hours. At 10 hours, I'm elected. At 12 hours, I'm sworn in. At 14 hours, the dollar will be 10 kwacha. He did not say, after you vote for me, I will take 10 years. No. He said within two hours, the dollar, the kwacha will appreciate. He did not tell us that when you vote for me, I'll wait for two years before the price of minimum becomes 50 kwacha per 50 kg bag. He said you vote for me in August. By October, the price of minimum will be 50 kwacha. He told you, Zambians, that if you are mugula per 15 kwacha a liter, it is because PF are allowing middlemen to th steal three kwacha. So when you elect me, the fuel price will be 12 kwacha per liter. He did not say after two years. But now after two years, what has the reality been? Millimil, which he found at 120 kwacha, today is 310 kwacha. He didn't say, I'll increase prices so that I can come and reduce them, like his deputy president, vice president said. No. Fuel, like I said, was at 15 kwacha. Today, fuel is 30 kwacha. Double. Within two years. He found fertilizer. We were selling fertilizer on the open market at 650 kwacha a bag. Today, it's 1,300 kwacha a bag. Electricity. Connection fee from 750 kwacha to 7,700 kwacha. And yet he comes to us and tells us, Yembekezani, Yembekezani, I'm considering me, I'm very visionary. In an hour, Dala Uko. I told you that. In politics, just like in ordinary life, there is a value, a virtue called morality. Once you promise a person, and especially once you promise a people, a country, and they give you what you're asking for, the presidency, and you realize that that promise you made you're not capable of fulfilling it. If you're a morally upright person, what do you do? You resign. You resign. You resign. But if you are such a greedy person and you're afraid of resigning, at least the next thing you do before you make another promise is to apologize. You apologize and say, Zambians, I am sorry. I deceived you, Zambians. Or at least if you want to hide that you are a de de deceptive person, you say, Vane, I didn't know. Sina oziva kuti vintu nivo vuta. I promised you kuti nizabweza mutengu wa chimanga. But now I've realized, no, vavuta. Please, ni pasa ni kontau, ni punzide. That's what a morally upright person does. You don't just hide your promises and come up with new promises. And yes, you can fool some people sometime, but you can't fool all the people all the time. You can't. At you, you know things will be better. How can things be better when we can see that the cost of production is increasing? We advised him, we said, you cannot be changing the price of fuel every month. You can't be changing the price of electricity every month. Because the producers of goods and services have a one-year 
planning perspective. You can't find a businessman who buys commodities today at this cost and produces without knowing what the cost will be for replacing those raw materials. No. People put prices based on the cost of replacement of raw materials. <clears throat> and what is happening now is that all businesses are planning on the basis of increment of fuel prices on a monthly basis. So they are taking the highest at the end of the year and passing it on to consumers because they have to survive. Who has caused that? The so-called economist. And that is the same with all other commodities. And with that in place, he's still saying, I am visionary, I'm seeing far. <laughs> now you see, this is the danger of people who claim to see far. If you put your perspective far and you don't see what is here, you fall in the ditch. Yes. And that's what's happening with, with this government. They are thinking they are seeing far and yet they can't see what is right in front of them, right under their nose. We want a leadership that will look down under the nose and see the problems now. Fix the problems now for the future. Don't create problems now hoping that the future will solve itself. No. You can't solve future problems if you are failing to solve the problems now. We also advised him, we said, we were not negligent when we slowed down our negotiations with the IMF. We were not negligent at all. We kept repeating this. We said we did not agree with the five conditions that were given to us by the IMF. And we refused to accept those conditionalities because we knew that they are going to hurt the citizens of Zambia. We refused to remove fuel subsidies because we knew that many farmers will not be able to produce if the fuel costs increase. We knew that with the increase in cost of fuel, there will be increase in cost of goods and services. I was in Ikembe, in the village, the other weekend. And I said to my relatives there, well done, you voted here for UPND. And now you have free education, well done. Mm -hmm. Now my relatives in this village can go to school. And they said to me, Mukwabo, free education when we can't afford fuel to take our children to school. Our children are just sitting in the village because we have no money to take them to school because of the cost of fuel, because of the cost of transport. In Kabwata, where I live, children are being transferred from schools where they were initially to be brought back close to home. Why? Because the parents can't afford transport costs. Of what use is free education? And by the way, what is even that free education? 200 kwacha per term, ni free education. 200 kwacha, and Zambians are even singing, hey, free education, 200 kwacha. Free 200 kwacha free education, wana malaiti mulibe manjamba na kakoloboy. They can't study because the parents can't afford electricity. I want to assure you, Zambians, that for as long as President Haga Inde continues for as long as he continues on the IMF program, even his so-called long-term vision is blurred. And what he's talking about is just, again, like he talked about before elections. Alice in Wonderland, dreaming, daydreaming. He's just simply daydreaming. He was daydreaming before 2021 when he said, I'm going to reduce the price of millimule. He was daydreaming. 
When reality dawned, he said, give me 10 years. Who told him that we want to keep him there for 10 years? <coughs> we keep him there for 10 years when he's planning to murder all of us by wringing our necks. Who will remain by that time? Because that he wants us at Dandaula, he will do mingalato na kuenda kumbuyo na kukama pakosi. You cannot reduce the cost of living in a country where the production of the staple food is not managed properly. You can't. And you know, when, when you are mythomaniac, even when you try to tell the truth, your tongue becomes heavy. When you are allergic to the truth, when you want to say the truth, your tongue becomes tied. Because you just have the disease of telling lies. When you're telling lies, then your lip and your tongue are free. Surely can you believe that the head of state can say, when we took over, there was no maze. Eh? Ni president wa buanjana maboza yaso. Has he forgotten that his own Minister of Information, Kasanda, early 2022, was showing us silos in Chisamba. And she was pointing and saying, this maze was from 2019, from 2020, from 2021. Eh? We can't keep maize for such a long time. We have to offload it to the export market so that we create space for new maize. And yet President Akam, but we didn't find maize. Now, like I told you, besides just increasing the cost of fertilizer, even just the management of the procurement of fertilizer has become a problem. In one year, he has cancelled the procurement process three times. Issue tender, people apply, they evaluate, afterwards, no, cancel. Start again. Second one, evaluate, cancel. Third time, evaluate, cancel. And now we just see that they are shortlisting privately. Why are they doing that? Why are, do, why are they doing that? I want to commend you journalists. Keep your sources active. As we have read today in one of the newspapers, $7.8 million is what has motivated the cancellation, revival, cancellation, revival of the fertilizer procurement procedure. People want to pocket $7.8 million dollars. Who's going to pay that? Poor Zambians. You will pay it in the increased price of maize and the increased price of millimil. Enriching who? The ones who are instructing. Start, cancel. Start, cancel. And he's saying, are the vision far? <laughs> The patriotic front, in realizing that we cannot leave the trade in our step of food to the private sector alone, we decided to invest in Zambia police, we invested in ZNS, we invested in giving them capacity to grow maize, we also gave them capacity to mill maize. The reason why we set up milling plants in police stations, at police, in the police uh, farms and ZNS farms was because we wanted these to stabilize the local price of millimil. That when the private sector increased the price of millimil because of shortage of maize, then we can instruct police and ZNS to release maize, to release millimil on the market to dampen prices. 
That's how people who are visionaries think. People who think far. That's how they think. They think now and plan for far. They don't forget now and think far. No. Now these who think far, what have they done? They have now told ZNS, go and print bags written ZNS for export. How can Zambia National Service, an organization that is paid by taxpayers, an organization that draws money from you, the Zambian people, how can you tell them that you export when the private sector is also exporting? Who's going to cushion the local market? You can see that these are blind people. When I was a boy, I used to be told the story of short people. That when a short person met you and they asked you, Wanu onera kuti? Ukamuza tina kuonera apa kumenya. Kuma umuza tina kuonera uko. Chimozi mozi nawa. Because they don't have any vision whatsoever. This is the reason they are pretending. And saying, don't worry. Apa muona monga, we are not solving problems. We are solving for far. So that you don't realize that actually they are not planning anything. Because uko kufa. Si muzafikako. You will not hold them accountable. Let us see them changing things now. We want the paradigm shift now. And if they have failed, the moral thing to do is to say, Vane, nakangiwa. There are many other things they can do. And there are many other Zambians who are capable of this running, running this country better. Look at the disaster that Hagainde himself personally, and this is not about his government, he himself personally, Hagainde, he did a Masami, murderous BMW. Last year, you remember what he did? Before the planting season of 2022-23, what did he say? He told Z Zambian farmers, I've found a big market for soya in China. This is a good opportunity. Farmers grow soya because there is a soy, there is an export market. Farmers, including myself, Vanakachinda, even me, I was deceived. I was deceived. I took 10 hectares of my maize field. I said, I'm going to do soya. When I harvested, what did Hagainde say? I'm not buying the soya. And then, at 11 kwacha. Six kwacha. Yes, six kwacha. Hmm? Four kwacha. Who created poverty among those farmers? MBMW. MBMW. Anati uza ise... PF are delaying in removing Vedanta. Me, when I come, the first thing I'll do is to remove Vedanta because Vedanta is a bankrupt group. They are not mining and so on and so forth. People are suffering because of Edgar Chagwalungu. He is in cohort with, ECA, with the, uh, Vedanta. We told the Zambian people that, look, Vedanta gave us a number of promises. And of all these promises, including paying suppliers and paying taxes, of all the promises Vedanta hadn't fulfilled, not even one promise. Mm -hmm. And what did Haga Inde say? I'll remove them. In 2022, what did he say? I'll remove them, these people. Me, I'm going to remove them. I want these court cases to end. I remove them. I'm not bringing back Vedanta. Now, this year, what is he saying? Today, what is he saying? 
I'm bringing back Vedanta because they have promised that they're going to invest one billion. And they'll be better under us. They were devils under PF. They'll be better under us. People who everybody knows are bankrupt. I'm sure that some of you remember what Edgar Chagwalungu said. He challenged Hagainde when Hagainde was opposition leader. He said, you Hagainde, don't lie to the Zambian people. These people have promised you money. And you are even telling them that no hundred thousand dollars are cheaper. You can't pour niina. Now we're being vindicated. I see apa. You can't hide lies for a long time. The truth will always catch up. And on behalf of PF, I have to say we condemn the decision to bring back Vedanta. And we stand with the people of Chingola. And in regrouping, we shall also go to Chingola to yes. go and talk to the people in Chingola. Yes. I once asked our chairman for mines, Honorable Mai, uh, Musukwa. He appeared on uh, 5FM. I'll ask him to appear now on even more radio stations. So that he can give the Zambian people all the technical aspects of this Vedanta business. So that Zambians can see that actually we're being shortchanged over this Vedanta business. This is simply another channel of siphoning money. Talking about siphoning money, I want to talk to my friend. And when I say friend, colleagues, I don't mean it in bad faith. When I say friend, they are my friend. And this friend I'm talking to now is my friend, Kavesha. Kavesha, you've had a very distinguished legal career. Highly distinguished gentleman. But my friend, for your own information, if you're not aware, you are being trapped. And you may be alone. The ones who are trapping you will not be there. You, Kavesha Mulilo, as Attorney General of the Republic of Zambia, you are legal advisor number one to Hagainde and to Cabinet. And you know better than many other Zambians and many lawyers that the concept of a nole in court is not an acquittal. Yeah. This is the reason why when I was arrested myself at the behest of Nelly Muti, I told the NP, I said, I don't want a nonsensical nole. I refuse. You either arrest, convict me, or acquit me. Because a nole is not an acquittal. What we've been observing in the recent past is theft, open siphoning of public resources. We saw this happen in the Hartembo case. Those fellows who were implicated in the Hartembo case, they were not convicted, nor were they acquitted. They were released on a nole. What that means is that at any time in the future, the state may rearrest you and prosecute you. It means that you still have this issue on your head. You have Jibudu on your head. <coughs> now, for you to go and start sitting, Attorney General, with people who are carrying knowledge, and you enter consent and we say, we'll compensate you. Don't think that Hagainde is the only person who has the propensity of digging the past. Uh -uh. And especially because of Hagainde's conduct, you can also be less assured that the next government will have people who will say, uh uh, nice attend Tikumbe. And they will dig and they will find that you 
You are the one who is entering constant judgments over these knowledge. You give people 6.4 million kwacha each on a nole of the treason issue in Mongo. None of those people are acquitted. No. The next government might open that matter again and say we want to investigate how this matter was conducted. How was the sixth president's safety impaired? When, when that happens, what will happen? When you've already paid people 6.4 million? And by the way, if indeed your government is a just government, why don't you list down all the people who are on Nole? Because there are many. In this country, there are many people who are on a Nole. People who were arrested, they were put behind cells, behind bars, and the state preferred to enter a Nole. Why don't you list all of them and compensate all of them? Why are you being selective? Why only your friends, your relatives? Why? And also beyond that, Kavesha, having been minister in that ministry, I want to tell you that we know that there are people on that compensation and awards fund from way back in the 1990s who, have yet to, who are yet to be paid. The retirees are on that same list. Why is it that you have not cleared the people that we, the government owes from many years ago, but you are paying these ones now? Why? Where is justice? Why are you not following the principle of first in, first out? Now you're following the principle of last in, first out. Why? This, as far as we're concerned, is simply looting. Looting. There were 13 people who were involved in that matter. 14 people involved in that treason matter. One has said, I will not start this matter until after I've left office. For which I'm president, but because I'm president, I'll bring back this matter. I must be compensated. Huh? Now, out of those 14, one says, I'll come back, Nikachoka, our president. Then there are 13. Of the 13, Kabesha, why only 10? Why are they not on the list? Why are those three not on the list? <laughs> Attorney General, tell us why those three are not on the list. And don't tell me that they didn't come to you because that was a group action. It wasn't individual action. It was group action. When you preferred a nole on all of them, it was all the 14. You can't pick willy-nilly. Tell us the reason why the three are not there. And I leave this to you, journalists. Find out. What is the difference between those 10 who are on that compensation list and the three who are left out? Find out and write the story. And Amuzan, that, that is total looting. And I want to assure you, my friend Kavesha, this matter will not, will not rest. It shall haunt you. I may be there, I may not be there, but I can assure you it shall haunt you.